Hello everybody and welcome to this another video by J.A. Curtis. We've got a really cool topic today, a really popular topic that I get asked about a lot and I'm actually going to be using this video for um, a lot of references when we start all sorts of different frameworks and everything like that. We always have to talk about MVC. So I thought about putting together a video here just to help everybody better understand what MVC really, really means. And I know it's a hot topic right now because all the cool kids are using MVC and all the cool frameworks are using MVC. And I remember back when I was trying to first understand this, it really didn't make any sense to me. But now looking back, it seems like a really, really simple concept. So I'm hoping that you guys can feel the more simple end of it because I'll explain it really well. Um, and if not, feel free to reach out to me and um, I'd love to help work with you and help explain it a little bit more. But I just remember when I worked on it, I don't know if I wasn't being explained um, if it wasn't being explained well to me and I just needed a better teacher or if maybe it's just a really complicated thing at first until you start using it. But as soon as you start using it, it seems so basic and simple. So I think that's why a lot of people struggle teaching it is because it, it seems like a really basic topic. But it, I know from um, learning it myself, I remember how complicated and overwhelming it can seem. So I'm going to do my best to make this as simple and straightforward as possible so that you can get the most out of your programming and really capture the essence of model view controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I just wanna say that model view controller is actually a, um, it's not a framework. A lot of people call it a framework. It has nothing to do with a framework. Um, it is just an architectural paradigm. And so what that means is, um, we've got some nice architecture here. What it just means is the structure of your um, web development and your programming is gonna be built in a certain way um, in this MVC format, okay? So we're gonna separate our model, our view, and our controller, and build the application in a certain, um, to process information in a certain way, okay? So that's what MVC is, and I think that's where a lot of people get confused, is they think it's something more than it really is, and all it really is is more like a paradigm. It's just a, it's a way of thinking and a way of processing information, and a way to structure your application um, so that it processes it, processes information in the correct way. Okay, so this was originally created in 1979, which was, you know, before the web had really gotten big or anything like that. So it's been around for quite some time. 1975 is, sorry, 1979 is ancient history as far as the internet's concerned. Um, that really is near the beginning of the internet, as far as we know it at least. At that point, it was mainly used still by governments and large, large corporations. Um, okay, so that's basically all this is, and I think that's the most important thing I want to stress about this framework, uh, sorry, about MVC, is that it's not a framework. It's just a way of thinking, an architecture standpoint. So it's just a way of structuring our web applications, okay? And you're going to understand that here in a second. Now, real quick, why is MVC so popular? It's just popular because um, it's used by so many popular frameworks. So I'm sure you guys have heard of some of these. Ruby on Rails was one of the first ones to actually start using it and um, really popularized it there. Cake PHP is another one. We have Django, which is a, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, a Python-based um, web framework. And then we've also got Laravel, which is growing in massive popularity today. In fact, I do a lot of tutorials on Laravel. So if you are interested in learning more about Laravel, please subscribe below and um, you'll see a lot more of these in the future. And then also Ruby on Rails, we're doing a lot of those. Um, and then we also have Zend Framework. This one used to be very, very popular, kind of coming out of popularity, and um, but it is a very, po very powerful framework for PHP. And then the other one is Coding Niter, which is another favorite of mine. It's a, nice, it's a very light framework. It can just be thrown onto a shared host without any worry. Um, really good for small applications, I've found. So I really enjoy Coding Niter, but again, it also uses that MVC structure. Now, these are frameworks. So a lot of people get confused with MVC and frameworks. The frameworks implement a structure, an MVC structure, but the MVC is not itself not a framework. And so in order to use some of these, you actually need to understand MVC. And I'm guessing that's why you're here watching this video is because you're probably learning Ruby on Rails or Laravel or one of my tutorials and I recommended it because um, you need to understand it so you can program in these frameworks and understand how, um, where to put different um, chunks of code in the framework, you need to understand MVC in order to do that. Now, one of the big ones I forgot to put up here and I'm kicking myself in the butt right now is iOS also. So if you're learning iOS, um, iOS kind of does an MV, it's actually heavily built around MVC. So Objective-C and um, any Mac application, anything like that, Objective-C is heavily built around MVC. In fact, they took the C language 
And um, Objective C is literally the object oriented version of C, and they built MVC directly into that. So that's another huge one I forgot to put on here. And that's less of a framework and more of a language, but it's Apple, so it's kind of one and the same. They kind of built it into a framework as well, especially when you add in the SDK. So these, that's why these are so popular, and you can see that you're, if you want to take advantage of these frameworks, you really need to understand MVC. So what the hell is MVC? We have been talking a lot about it. What exactly is it? Well, I've mentioned this once other written before, is the M stands for model, the V stands for view, and the C stands for controller. And so put those together and you get the, those are basically the three structural elements of MVC. So think of MVC as a three-legged stool. You need all three of these in order to function. If you took the view out, you took the model out, you took the controller out, you took any one of those elements out, the whole thing would crumble. So it does require all three elements with a few caveats. You t sometimes can leave out a model if you don't require some sort of um, you know, storage of information, but almost any modern um, web application today will require storage of information at the very least to log in if you're going to have any sort of login or authentication you need a model for that so models have become very very common next um, some of the other reasons the MVC is needed is it prevents us from having to repeat ourselves and it helps create a solid structure around our web applications so um, again because we separate out these codes we it creates a really, really solid structure. Back in the day, what we used to do with web applications is you would start at the top and just code all the way down. And so you would just create, um, like take PHP, for example, is really, really well because it was almost like a templating engine. So we would start at the top, we would start with the head of the HTML, and as we came to elements that we needed, um, let's say we needed to dynamically create a title for the website, we would then directly, even in there sometimes, write SQL code to target the database, pull a title from the database, and then insert it dynamically into the code. And then we would go, we'd go down to the next element and so forth. And we'd have loops and all sorts of other stuff right there inside the HTML. And so that's where structure is really important is we're gonna separate all those out so that everything has its place. And it's gonna be really easy to locate it because those types of structures never work. It's because if you're trying to find one thing it can be, you don't really know where to look for it. And that's why the structure is important. And the repeating is also important because sometimes, very commonly, we're gonna write things that we repeat over and over and over again. And having a solid structure allows us to prevent repeating ourselves. And that helps us a lot down the road if you decide to change an element of your um, web development and um, you wanna change one little element and it's repeated a hundred times throughout your application, if you built it correctly, you only need to change it in one place and then it will repeat itself throughout the application. So that's why MVC is, is going to be important. Now to explain MVC the best possible way that I can think of, I like to explain the structure and flow of a website. So let's go through it real quick. Now everybody sits there, you're sitting there on your laptop, using the internet, let's say you're looking at Google right now. We'll just use Google because everyone's used it, so it's a great example on what to do. So you're sitting here, um, we call this the client. You're actually the one using the internet and you're requesting stuff from your web browser. So all of these are clients. We have the Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, um, Opera, any of those uh, web browsers are called clients and that's how you view the internet. Now. The client is simply processing and rendering HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we kind of call those client side like client side languages. Um, technically, HTML and CSS are more markup languages, not technically a programming language. JavaScript is considered kind of a client side language. It's it's not super t important right now, but um, we all call all these basically are happening on the client. They're being rendered on the client in the browser, and the browser is actually the one processing the information. Okay, so. This is the client, That's the, the this is the user of the, the website. Now let's say he goes into Google and he types in lolcats. He wants a lolcat, because everyone wants a lolcat. So what the client then does is, it doesn't display the information right away because it doesn't have the browser um, right away. And all this happens in the fraction of a second. And that's why it feels like it's instant, but it's actually happening, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. So you type lolcats into Google, you click enter, and a request gets sent out to Google's servers, okay? Now, um, this is the server, and it can be any, it can be big or small, depending on the size of your website. And the server usually runs either Linux or Windows. 
um, Windows Server. About 80% of the internet runs off Linux, so it's definitely the most common. If you have a, a shared host account with Bluehost or GoDaddy or something like that, you're running on a Linux server. If you're running uh, WordPress, you're using that's a Linux-based system. Uh, you know, WordPress runs on a Linux Apache system. So, um, and then the server is actually running server-side languages, which are PHP, Ruby, Python. There's many others. Um, uh, I forgot ASP.NET or something like that um, for the Windows side. These are all Linux-based um, languages, but um, or open source languages, I should say. They could run on. Regardless, anyway, these languages are kind of running on the server. These are processing your information. So the request for a lolcat comes down to the server. The server says, okay, we could make a, we, let's make a search result page, which is what you're expecting for lolcats. I need to get lolcats from the internet. Well, the server itself is not storing any information, and that's a critical thing to remember. A lot of people think servers store information, and while they can, they don't store your um, your web information. That's all saved in another piece of architecture, of um, which is called the database. Okay, so the server itself, while it has variables and stuff like that, it can't save, it only keeps those variables and that information for the single request, for a fraction of a second, and then removes it. Um, if you need consistent information carried um, over long periods of time, you re it requires a database. And so um, the server needs to go out to the database and say, hey, I'm looking for lolcats, what do you have for me? And the database then will then process this and find all the lolcats. So the databases that you may have heard of, we have MySQL, Postgres, School, Postgres, Postgres, NoSQL, MongoDB. NoSQL and MongoDB are really growing in popularity right now. Probably the most popular around the entire internet is MySQL. MySQL is, um, again, WordPress, which runs like 70% of websites, uses MySQL. Most open source um, programs use MySQL. So because of that, I'm not saying it's the best necessarily because that's a huge debate that I don't want to get into, but it is definitely the most popular. It's the, most, it's the one you'll see the most commonly around the internet. And again, if you're running a WordPress website right now, which I'm guessing a lot of people watching this are, um, WordPress is based off of MySQL, okay? So it's running on MySQL. And then um, this contains all of the storage in the server. Again, like I mentioned earlier, the server doesn't store any information. It's all being stored in the database. And this could be either a relational or a non-relational database. MySQL and Postgres are relational databases. NoSQL and Mongo are non-relational non-relational databases. The reason I put this in here is that not to start the debate of what's better, because this will get people in arms of relational versus non-relational, but the point is that it doesn't matter whether it's relational or non-relational as far as MVC is concerned. It's still a database and it's looked at as a database. And a lot of actually frameworks such as Laravel and Ruby on Rails can actually function with multiple different databases. You can actually have, in fact, it can run multiple databases at the same time. You can have, um, uh, and so for that reason, it just treats everything as a database. And that's what I wanted to bring to point there. So the database then finds, it searches its files and finds a bunch of lolcats in its files and says, okay, these are all the lolcats I can find, sends the request back down to the server. The server then processes it one more time saying, okay, these are all the lolcats I have. I'm going to limit it to 50 right now for the first page. It creates a page with HTML and CSS, shoots it back to the client and then the client's web browser is then going to process that and render it onto the screen so that you can finally see this. And all of this happens in the fraction of a second. So this is where the MVC comes into play. This is a structure that happens regardless of MVC. This is happening no matter what. Even if you were to um, write this procedurally, a, a one page that actually does all the information in one single line, while it would be very bloated and not ideal, you're still processing this same, there's still the same process here. You clients requesting something from the server, the server then has to get information from the database, the database sends it back to the server, and then the server then um, shoots it back to the client so the client can view something. And that's where MVC is built around, is saying, hey, since we're always we're always using the same structure, the same flow when we're um, processing internet requests. We're always, you know, the, there's always someone in the middle of the server needs to shoot information to a database, and then it, it uses that information, processes it, creates a web page, and then gives that back to the client. That's always happening. So why don't we just separate those three things into three different separated um, files every single time we request this, and that way we can repeat if we need to repeat parts of the database, we can. Um, 
all sorts of stuff like that, we can have them all separated and clean. And that's where MVC is built around. So if we take the MVC idea, the model is the database. And that that's what the model is, is gonna be the database. We're gonna go in a little bit more in, in the next slide here. The view is the client and the controller is the server. So that's where MVC comes in. So if you think about this structure and how websites are viewed, you can see that the model, the view and the controller come directly from this traditional um, flow of websites. And so that to me helps me wrap my head around what model view controller is. It's basically the idea that if you're writing code that's related to the database part, section of this flow, it goes in the model. If you're writing code that's gonna be, that's processing information to or from the database or before it gets to the view, that's all happening on the server end, that's the controller. And if you're actually gonna output front end visible code that's gonna be viewed in the client's web browser, then that's on, that happens in the view, okay? So you think about when you're writing code, where does it go or what does it do as related in related to this flow and then you you can really easily tell where it belongs and so this to me helps me really make sense of it going into a little more detail um the model is anything we do to interact with your data okay so this is when we take things from the database or when we add or retrieve anything from the database that's happening in the model the model is the one actually connected connected to the database and it's actually pulling information from the database okay and then it's handing the information over to the controller. The controller itself never talks directly to the database. It only talks to the model, and then the model is the one that's actually connected to the database, talking to it. So it's gonna process that data either to or from the database. The model goes, talks back and forth to the database and then shoots information back to the controller. The model only contacts the controller, never will contact the view directly, ever. Okay, so the controller is in the middle and the, it talks to the controller only. And that's really important to know. Next, we have the view. So we're doing M. Now we got the V. The view is what's displaying information to the user. Um, we talked about this before. It's your traditional HTML and CSS. So when you think of looking at a website, this is the only thing you'll ever see is you never see the controller when you're looking at Google, when you're looking at Zappos or whatever, um, Amazon. You're only seeing the view because that's all that's ever displayed to the user. The controller and the model happen behind the scenes. So whatever you're seeing or whenever you're displaying information directly to a viewer, you, a user, you know that that belongs in the view because that's the only thing the user ever sees is the view. Okay, and then again, the view never talks directly to the model. It only talks to the controller. And it actually, it shouldn't even, doesn't even really talk to the controller. It listens to the controller. So we're gonna do one more flow here in a second and you'll see that the controller tells the view what to do and the view never talks back, okay? So the view is following directing instructions from the controller. It doesn't make any decisions for itself. The view is very dumb. It only listens and follows commands and never talks back. Okay, so it's a one-way um, thing here. And then last, we've got the C, the M, V, and now the C, the controller. So the controller is what's interacting with the user. So the best way to think about this is every time you send a request to a server, the controller is what's receiving the request. It's processing the request. Whether it's a get request, a post request, a put, destroy, all those requests is are what it's receiving. It handles all that server-side logic, unless it's handling the database directly, but even then, it tells the model, oh, here's what I need, and then the model just follows those instructions directly. So the controller is really the man in charge, and it's the middleman, which you'll see in the next um, little snippet. It takes information from the user, it processes that information, talks to the database if it needs it, usually it will, um, and then it receives information from the database, and then after processing that, it will then take all that information that it's compiled and send it to the view and explain how to present it to the user. Okay, so it explains how the view should, it again, it's the commander, it tells the view what to do and the view just follows those instructions. Okay, so the controller is definitely your most important part when you're writing your language, your code, whether it's you know PHP or Python or uh, Ruby, it's all mainly happening in the controller. That's definitely the bulk of your code is in the controller or bulk of your logic. You might actually have more characters in some of the front end stuff in the view, but um, it's definitely handling the bulk of the logic. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap and see who speaks to who and just kind of get this, um, kind of solidify this in your brain once and for all. So you got the user here. We got Mystery Man using a little uh, white computer. And um, he, let's say, again, he's going to send a request to, the, to a server. He needs, he needs information from a server. Now, one thing I haven't talked about, but I'm just going to throw this in here, is called the route processing. And um, 
the route processing is happens and because we're talking about MVC and in, in the function of how it works in a framework, frameworks all have a route processor, which basically says if you're talking, if you're doing mywebsite.com slash contact, this is where you send it because there's multiple controllers inside every framework and it needs to know which controller is in charge of processing um, this web page. So if you're going to go to a, a search, there's probably a search controller. If you're going to go to a, a, a static page like contact, there's probably a pages controller. If you're going to, if it's a blog and you want to find a specific post, the root will figure out what post you want and say, oh, that belongs to the post controller. I'm going to shoot it off to the post controller. So there can sometimes be multiple controllers. And so the root processes what the user wants and says, oh, yep, you want this one controller. Here's the controller and sends it off to, um, to, to exactly that. So you have um, the root sends it to the controller. So the controller is receiving the quest request almost directly through just a route processor, but it basically receives all the information, looks at what the user wants. It could be a form, he could have just submitted a form. It could be just a basic um, get request for a website and so forth. And it figures out what it needs to do. In most cases, it'll need to handle, it'll need to talk to the database. So the controller would go out and say, hey, database, I need this from you aka model. So it goes and talks to the model. The model will then talk to the database directly, process, um, get all the information, and then send it back to the controller and say, hey, you asked me to do this. Here's what here's what I got. And the controller says, thank you. And then finishes processing the information, creates a website out of it or a view, or it doesn't actually create the view. It sends, takes the information that is needed in order to complete the view, sends it over to the view. The view is then compiled and sent to the user once they're all completing the whole cycle. So what you see here is that the user, all the user ever sees is the view once again. And so if the user then sends another request to go to the route processor, um, the controller handles it, it may talk back and forth to the model and then shoots the information over to the view. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That's the MVC structure. Forget about the um, order of MVC. The MVC order really doesn't matter. It's what really matters is, um, is is this flow right here. Okay, so these are the these are the roles that everything has. And when you type your code, again, we're not talking about a framework specific example here. This is a very generic example. And so every framework handles it slightly differently, but it's all basically the same. The controller is the middleman. It talks to the model. The model will send information back to the controller, but the model never talks to the view. After the controller gets its information, then it tells the view what to do, and the view never talks back to the controller. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and that explains MVC for you really, really quick. Now, I would love, if you guys did find this really um, helpful, I would love for you to shoot out, um, shoot a tweet out to me. Let me know that you found it helpful. You can just tell me you finally understand MVC. Thanks so much. Of course, here's my Twitter. I love Twitter, I'll, um, I'll reach out to you, favorite, retweet, whatever's necessary. Um, love to hear from you guys if you really appreciated this. If you want more information about this topic, um, I've actually written a really in-depth article about MVC with this video attached to it, and that's over on my blog. The short URL for that is jakurt.us slash capital MVC, okay? So this is the URL that you wanna do. I'll also put that in the description of the video below. And that'll go to my website where I go into a little more detail, um, both the, including this video and then also some written detail, more about MVC and how it pertains to different things. And I've also got lots of awesome tutorials over on jacurtis.com. Um, we've got tons of tutorials, tons of resources and classes. And if you go there, to, um, if you go there today and sign up on the homepage, you actually get a coupon and you can save money on any of the premium courses, but I also have a ton of free ones as well. So hopefully you can find something you really like. Also, don't forget to like the video. It really shoots up the exposure this video gets. So if this finally explained MVC to you, even if you don't care about me, don't do it for me, do it to help other people. If you like this video, it'll show up higher in the results when other people are searching MVC. And if you're able to find it helpful, chances are someone else will find it helpful. So this could save them a lot of work. So do it for the world, not for me. For me though, if you wanna help me, go ahead and subscribe. The subscribe button lets me send you cool videos and um, keep in touch with you. And we got tons of cool tutorials about different frameworks, marketing, SEO, all sorts of great stuff. And of course, jacurtis.com is my website, so you can shoot out to me there. And then follow me on jacurtis. Um, on Twitter, it's underscore jacurtis. So don't forget the underscore. Um, Till next time, guys, I'll see you later.